Hey guys, today we're going to do a disc brake swap on the back of a Jeep Cherokee. We're using Liberty disc brake parts off the eight and a quarter. They put them in the Cherokees and the Liberties certain years. Uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, here's everything you need to do the Liberty disc brake swap on the back of the XJs. This is a little bit better than the ZJ rear disc brake swap because you don't have to modify the backing plates. So you need the backing plates off a of 2003 to 2007 Jeep Liberty with the eight and a quarter rear axle. So I got the hardware kit for the emergency brake shoes. You can use um, rear ZJ or front Dana 30 Cherokee or ZJ new studs because you need longer studs because the stock studs in the rear axle on the Cherokee are too short once you put the backing plate and the new rotors on. And these are Jeep, Jeep Grand Cherokee ZJ rear brake lines. They are a little bit shorter than the Liberty ones so they package better. Cal or, uh, brake pads, new calipers, and new rotors. So the first thing you need to do, take your wheels and tires off. And the next thing you want to do, or you can do it before you take your wheels and tires off, is take all your rear differential cover bolts off. Now those are a half inch <coughs> bolt. Then peel your diff cover back and let it drain, which I already did. If the shoes would have been good and I was reusing the brakes, I would have just went in behind on the back of the backing plate and backed off the wheel adjuster instead of pounding the drum off. But I'm not reusing any of this and I was being lazy, so I just pounded it off. These brake shoes pretty much have had it. So then you take this tool for your springs. Just put it over there like that and then twist it. Pops your springs off. You just disassemble your brakes the way you would if you're doing brake shoes. And this tool is for these little Springs. Right there. Put your hand on the back side, take your finger and hold the back of the pin. And then just spin the little round retainer. Sometimes these can be a pain because they want to spin the pin on the back side. There's that one.
once you get your differential cover off, your tires off, and all your brakes, this or drum brakes off, you take an eight millimeter and back out this little bolt here. It holds a cross pin in for your carrier. Hold your axle shafts in. They have a C clip. You gotta pull this out, push in on the axle. You can take a magnet or something and get that little C-clip off the end of the axle shaft. While you're in here, you might want to check your axle seals, outer and inner axle seals and everything, make sure Everything's good, and if you got anything leaking, now's the time to replace it. Well, you got the whole rear axle torn apart. Or if you want to put a locker or something in. I already have a front Spartan locker. I'm going to leave the rear open for now. There it is. Then you take your cross pin and slide it out just like that. Push your axle in, pull your C-clip out. But here's the little C-clip. Once you push your axle shaft in, just pull this little C-clip out and then your axle shaft will come right out. And then you just have to take these bolts off here that hold your drum brake backing plate on. Oh yeah, and these are 14 millimeter. Almost forgot you need to take your brake line off your back of your backing plate. And it's a 3/8. your backing plate off all right now we got the backing plate off we can start driving out the studs that hold the backing plate on they're just pressed in so what I do is I just get a brass hammer and just that one it can be kind of a pain so sometimes you might need to heat them up with the torch let them cool and try tapping them out again after that this is Jeep is originally from Georgia so they're not too bad it's only been in Michigan for four winters so I got the four studs out top two came out pretty easy the top two I had to, I mean the bottom two, I had to break out the bigger hammer. 
and a punch. And then use a little bit of heat for my bottle torch and a little bit of penetrating oil, a little bit of heat, a little bit of penetrating oil and finally got them out. Got everything all torn apart. Now I'm just gonna get everything cleaned up, ready to install the other backing plates on and the new axle seal when I get them. Like I guess on this side. Didn't look like it was leaking, but no sense only replacing one side. This one's all pretty clean. Bearings look good. Not seeing any pitting or any kind of wear on the rollers on the bearing. So I should be able to just swap out the axle seals and be ready to go. So to get this axle seal out, I was able to take this punch and slowly peel this lip back that sits right along here. I bend it down around the top and then that released enough pressure I was able to put in like that and then tap this end with a hammer right here and then it just pops right out. Now I got it all cleaned up and it's ready for the new one to go in. So I got the end of the axle all cleaned up and ready for the new seal. I got the Dorman, I mean the crown replacement part there's the part number now I just gotta tap that in probably with a piece of 2x4 or a dead blow hammer all right just take your new seal after you get it all cleaned up set it in there like that get it somewhat square then you can take a dead blow hammer or a piece of 2x4 and a hammer and just tap it in until that lip is flush with the end of your axle tube. So the easiest way to get these e-brake cables off is to take a 13 millimeter and it has little tabs that hold against the backing plate they spring out and keep it in. Take a 13 millimeter wrench, take the box end, and work it around. Down onto those little fingers and it presses them in enough to where Usually you can get the fingers to squish in enough to where it'll slide right out, usually. Sometimes you gotta take a flat blade. Push a couple of those fingers in. There you go. See these little tabs 
right here spring out and grab the backing plate. So when you push that 13 millimeter down on there, the box end, it pushes all those tabs in and then allows it to come out of the hole right here, out of the backing plate on the back side. Okay, now we're gonna try to get the Liberty backing plates cleaned up. We'll take a wire wheel to them, try to get all the rust off as much as we can and get some uh, two-part epoxy primer on it and some paint and then we'll get them installed. So unless you get the studs that hold the backing plate on off the Liberty, you got to take a grade eight bolt and shave off just a little bit on the one side because you need a flat spot to sit on the axle tube. The best bet is to get the ones off the Liberty. I forgot to, so I'm doing the grade eight bolt option. For comparison, here's the ones that come off the backing plates for the drum brakes for the Cherokee. But they're not long enough, so you gotta have the longer ones off the Liberty or cut that little piece off the grade eight bolts, whatever option you choose. Like I said, the ones off the Liberty would be best. I'm trying to wrap this up today, so I don't have time to get any, nobody has any in stock. So I'm just going to do the grade 8 bolts because you can pretty much get those in a hardware store.
I almost forgot before you slide your axle shafts in, you want to put a little grease on your bearing rollers. That way you're not running them dry. So I slid the axle shafts back in, got the center pin in, and put the C-clips back in. It's just the reverse of what you did when you took it apart. So here's how I did my brake lines. Usually your factory brake line would come straight in the back and go into your wheel cylinder on the drum brakes. You just gotta bend it so it up a little bit and it points down and then here's the Jeep ZJ hoses. I'm gonna weld a little tab right here to mount it to so this doesn't wiggle around and crack the brake line. but. You just gotta bend it up and around and instead of straight in the back and then this end will hook to your caliper i'll show you on the other side what i did that side's all assembled already so here's the other side kind of see how i did it comes off the caliper loops down and around and up just same thing with this one i gotta weld on the tab on the axle tube to hold the bracket in place so the line doesn't move around all right, there it is all assembled, both sides. Rear diffs all back together. Now I just gotta put the diff cover on and bleed the brakes and fill up the diff with diff fluid. I finger tighten the bolts and let it sit for an hour before torquing them, just like the directions say. Now it's time to torque them down the rest of the way.